Hello, hi, what's up? How are you guys doing? Life is weird. I think I think that's okay. Decided. Is this is this good? Is this better? Oh god. Don't look at it. So um we've been in isolation for I don't even know how long now. Like two months, three months, almost three months. Uh it's the end of May right now. I don't even know what day it is. I don't know what day of the week it is. I don't know anything. I just finished yesterday. Uh, the second draft of my fiction novel that I've been working on for forever. Uh, basically, I was working on that draft from like January until now. What better way to spend my time now that I have nothing to do than start a reading vlog, read a really weird book, you know? I already started reading this book. I have begun it. I should have probably started this vlog a couple days ago, um, but this is a very interesting, weird book. And so I don't feel bad about starting a reading vlog a little bit late because I didn't actually think I was going to commit to this book. Um, it's called House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danieluski. If you've never heard of this book or seen this book, let me fill you in. I have known about this book for a decent amount of time. I The first time I ever heard of it or saw it was at a used bookstore like five years ago and I passed by this cover and I was like, oh, this looks interesting. I opened up the book and I was like, I don't know what you doing, but it looks weird. Maybe one day I'll get to it. Time passed, didn't think about it, didn't think about it. And then I kept seeing it on the internet and I got very curious. Now, uh, this book has a reputation. Uh, it's supposedly the scariest book of all time, supposedly. So in January after Christmas, I had some Christmas money left over and I bought the book and so it's been sitting there for about five months and I just haven't had the courage I think to pick it up because it's weird. A little bit of backstory on this book if you don't know. It was published for the first time in 2000 which is a long time ago. Oh my god 20 years ago. Anyways it was published in 2000 and before it got printed it used to be passed around on just like pages. Basically the author of this book wrote it on longhand. 700 pages longhand and then uh, when it was ready to get published he physically went to New York to the publishers to format it all himself because he didn't trust anybody else to do it. That's like the tip of the iceberg with this book. It is so fucking strange. Um, I have tried to read articles on it. I, I kind of found a couple reddit threads but most of the reddit threads have been like don't look for answers until you're done. Wait until the end. And I was like, okay, I get it. But also I want to know what it is. Part of what makes this so interesting is it's like kind of mixed media, but the way it's formatted is just like so goddamn weird. Like it uses negative space for a reason. Um, there's like an appendix in the back with like letters and there's some pictures in here of just like random. I don't even, I don't know what they mean. There's like footnotes. And some of the footnotes go on for like pages. I don't, I don't know what any of this means. I don't know. I don't know. But like that's like part of what drew me to it in the beginning is you open it up and it, it doesn't make any sense. If you don't want to know anything else, like that's bare bones knowledge of like what this book is. It's supposedly the scariest book of all time. It's horror, but it's not really. I mean, it is, but it's not. That's not it. That's not the point. That's not what it is, you know? And so if you don't want to be like spoiled, if you think you're interested, if you think you're going to read it, maybe like leave because like that's like bare bones knowledge. I want to talk freely so it's gonna be spoilery. If you don't have the energy to read a 700 page horror book or you're like some of my friends and it just freaks you out and it's really scary but you want to know, you want the experience, I will give you, this is my experience given to you freely so that you don't have to be scared. I am 72 pages into it but right now I'm actually in the back reading the appendix a little bit so I don't know what page I'm actually on. So there's a guy. It's an old guy. He's actually he's blind um, and he has written this like it's a commentary on a film. So it reads kind of like a literary paper except because we don't have the film to watch it also like explains shot by shot what this film is. And so the film that he's writing about is a documentary of this family that moves into a house and the house is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. Sounds like Doctor Who. Sounds fun and quirky. It's not. It's not quirky. It's weird. It's, it's weird. I can't really explain more of what that looks like because I'm still figuring it out. But outside of that, that is like the main content of the book. However, outside of that, there's also this guy who ends up finding the manuscript about this documentary that may or may not exist. And so the guy is offering commentary on the commentary on the film 
uh, as he reads through it, as he goes through his life. So most of his footnotes are him being like, so this is what I got out of it. So this is what's happening to me. I'm freaking out. I'm losing my mind. I'm going crazy. I'm terrified. And um, I don't know where it goes, obviously, but I've heard a lot of things about it that it's like, it's a horror story, but also it's supposedly a love story. And it's terrifying, but like, maybe it has heart question mark i don't know which is like my favorite i don't like horror just to be horrific you know like i don't i don't really like most horror movies however haunting of hill house is an example imaginary friend is an example it's horror but it's done with a reason and also there's like a message underneath that you're supposed to get through the whole horrific event so <laughs> I'm hoping that this is my jam. It, so far, it's been really interesting. It's a lot of work. It's going to be a lot of work because it's very slow going. And like, supposedly you have to like translate things and read things with a mirror and I don't, don't even know. It's a really good thing for me right now because I think my brain is at the point where it needs to be distracted at all times. And so if I spiral really, really quickly <laughs> into a hyperfixation of a horror book that doesn't really necessarily have answers, Maybe I'll go crazy for real. Let me catch you up on what has happened so far. Um, because there's like 70 pages that I have not talked about. I, there's spoilers from now on. So if, you, if you're intrigued and you don't want to know anymore and you want to be terrified with me, go read the book. It's a monster. So the beginning of the book, there's an introduction from Johnny, who is like, I'm thinking of him as our main character. He's, is he? I don't know. Johnny Truant. He is our guy who found Zapan Zapan Zapanos Zapanos. I don't remember how to say his name. Z Zampano, Zampano. That's what we're gonna say. Introduction by Johnny. The whole beginning is him being like, "So I'm really freaked out. I'm terrified. I'm tired. This is the old man. Uh, he used to live in this place, and he walked around, and there were a lot of cats." Uh, and then he died. And then me and my stupid friend Lude found his manuscript, and. It doesn't make a lot of sense, um, but you're gonna be terrified. And also this happens on Halloween, which is like, of course it does. That's like the whole introduction is him being like, so here's what's going on. This is, this is where we're at. I'm terrified, but it's fine. Everything's fine. We're fine. Everything's fine. And like, it's freaky, but I was like, is this the scariest introduction of all time? No, it's just like, creepy. The Navidson record. Navidson? I think Navidson is what I'm going with. The Navidson record is this fictional documentary like I was talking about. It's about a family who moves into a house and it's supposedly true. Fictional documentary but in this fictional world the documentary it's supposed to be real and true and it actually happens to them. It's not like a staged movie. Anyways they move into this house and eventually I mean it mm, mm, hard to explain it reads like an english paper because that's it's like supposed to be like academic writing um but they're like okay well actually let me let me sidetrack you for a second why did navidson have to make this what who is navidson what is this what is an echo <laughs> like there's so many like random ass detours and that's not even talking about the fucking footnote detours because that's a whole nother thing but the navidson record it exists they move into the house it's two parents and two kids and eventually what happens is for some reason Navidson tries to measure the house and he real he figures out that the inside is like a quarter of an inch bigger than the outside or a whole inch bigger than the outside I don't remember exactly and he's like cool that's not possible that can't that's not true so he measures it multiple times and then he still has a weird measurement so he calls his brother and then his brother measures it and it's like it's probably just your equipment it's cool and then they measure it and it's still bigger on the inside so they call somebody else and then he also measures it and all of them are like cool so it's still bigger on the inside that's concerning um but like what are you gonna do your house is bigger on the inside by like an inch it's fine everything's fine <laughs> they went to seattle that's what caused this whole thing for some reason the house changed um and and eventually one night a door appears a closet appears i don't know doors start appearing with hallways and the part i just read last night is navidson wasn't supposed to go down any of the hallways because his wife is terrified of close spaces and she's like if you go i will literally leave with the kids and he was like cool i'm gonna go down the hallway <laughs> and uh because he's like documenting everything you like get to see it through like his camera and it was a very bad idea i don't think he should have done it and he did it anyway but it's fine he like goes down this long ass hallway and he keeps following doors and going through and 
it's like a big ass maze. <laughs> and so eventually he like realizes he's just like stuck in, in, in this basement area, darkness, house place. He starts screaming, freaking out. And then his daughter like calls for him and he eventually like magically finds his way back to the real part of the house. And he's like, cool, that was freaky. And part of, part of that, I did read on a message board that a lot of the book is about like mazes and there's supposedly a minotaur, 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 I don't know any details about anything, but that's like, there's supposedly like a big maze underneath the house, I think is what I've gathered. I don't know what any of it means. Also house is in blue and minotaur is in red. And I don't know what the ink has to do with anything. Johnny has all of these footnotes that he adds. So he, we get to see his story a little bit of him experiencing this manuscript and he starts seeing things question mark he like half of his comments are like him doing drugs or him thinking about having sex or him having sex with random girls uh which is not fun to read but it's cool but on top of all of that he starts getting really like he starts having these episodes where he thinks he sees something in the periphery and so there's like one whole footnote where he's like, imagine like this is what's happening. You're reading this book, but also there's something that like is just out of sight, but you can't look at it, but you know it's there. It kind of reminded me of that Doctor Who episode actually um, with Prisoner Zero, but he's like, imagine it, it's there, it's coming, but you can't do anything. Keep looking at the page and uh, it's freaky. He has these episodes. So the one I just read last night, he was at, he works at a tattoo shop. And so he went to go get some ink and the whole little storage closet, like the light went out. And then he imagined that he saw this really freaky like creature and the creature started coming after him. And he like, it was very vivid to him. And he thought he like <laughs> shit his pants. And then he like falls down the stairs and he's like panicking, freaking out. Eventually his boss comes to find him and he's like, yo, what's up? And it turns out everything that he imagined was supposedly fake. Supposedly, we don't really know. Um, part of what's so interesting about this book is it's all about unreliable narrators because Johnny can literally, like there was one footnote where Johnny specifically was like, actually the real manuscript says that it's a heater, not a water heater. I made it a water heater because why the fuck not? You know, nothing matters. So like you're supposed to spend the whole time doubting everything because there's unreliable narrators at every turn, which I love unreliable narrators, but it makes it hard to concentrate on anything because like what is true and what is not. And on top of that, it's like he doesn't even necessarily know if he's unreliable because to him, a lot of it feels real. And he's like, I don't really know what's going on, but like this is what I thought happened. And then it didn't, and then I don't know. And I'm terrified and I don't, really, I don't know what's happening. And so the part that I ended at last night in his story, now the footnote is like, you don't have to do this, but if you want to, we have some letters in the back from Johnny's mom. So now I'm in the back of the book reading about Johnny's mom sending him all these freaky letters because she's in like a mental institution, I think. And he was in foster care because his dad died in a trucking accident. And she's like getting more and more distraught. And I don't, it just like gets really, it's supposedly gonna get really, really fucking weird. Basically, these are just the video logs of me slowly going insane is what, is what that means.
I finished all of the letters in the back. Johnny's mom was in a mental institution and she just gets like increasingly more insane. At certain points she starts talking about how there's like a new director at the place and then she every time she's like there's a new director and I hate him a couple letters pass and she's like actually just kidding it's still the same old director I don't hate him he's fine everything's fine and then at one point we figure out that there actually is a new director at one point so she makes a comment that's like just kidding it's the same director everything's fine and like we know for a fact that there was a new director so it proves that she was going crazy like we knew she was crazy but Anyways, there's this whole, like, the most important letter, I guess. There's one really long letter that you have to, like, decode. And I did. So, that was, that's, mm -hmm. Basically, it's like, you have to decode. It's like the first letter of every word makes a, a letter. A word. You know. It's, like, kind of disturbing. She, like, fears for her life. And she's, like, they're raping me. And it's terrible. And I'm in hell. And I want to die. And then, like, two... Like, she goes a little bit crazy. And then a couple letters later, she's like, just kidding. I was totally crazy. But everything's fine now. And then, uh, eventually, at the very end, she asphyxiates herself. So that's fun. Um, <laughs> and... I, I shouldn't be laughing. But we're at the point where it's just so goddamn weird that it's fine. Anywho... So I finished the letters, caught back up to um, the Navidson record. We are back and basically Navidson has found some people to explore his house. And so I haven't actually read like that much. I, I've, I maybe have made like 10 or 15 pages of legitimate progress. One of the little chapters is about the pets. So there's a dog and a cat and apparently they like, the cat doesn't make it out to the end of the movie. The dog does supposedly but he's like aged and you can see it in his eyes um and so uh johnny makes a really long footnote being like N nobody has talked about how the p the pets just like there's this thing where the pets can't really go in the hallway like they ran straight into the hallway but then like two seconds later they reappeared outside the house and so the pets are not really accepted by the house supposedly <coughs> And like none of the commentary, the fictional, but the commentary in this world has like commented on the pets. And so Johnny has this long end note where he's like, nobody's talking about the pets, but like pets. And then he was like kind of high, so he didn't really make any sense. But also like now I'm like, what about the pets? This crew of random dudes shows up and they're all like hikers, like they want to hike Everest. And so Navidson's like, good luck. We're going to like take precautions, like bring supplies and like fishing line and all this stuff. And like, you're going to go explore my house. And so they go into this hallway and there's like multiple expeditions. Right now I just finished expedition three. The first one is like kind of quick. The second one is closer to like seven or eight hours. And then this last one that they just went on was like 20 hours because they like went down the staircase and it took them like seven hours and they're not even at the end of the staircase and then they had to go back up and it took them 11 hours to get back home and like it's just I don't even this house is massive is basically what they're trying to show us it changes and there's like this really big staircase and there's all these rooms and so the guys are trying to like make maps and like figure out how big it is but like they haven't reached the end of it yet so it's like really really big and also it kind it's supposed to change kind of like Hogwarts I guess I don't know um and so yeah we don't really know what the heck is happening also there's been a lot of talk about Navidson and Karen's relationship Karen is the wife um and the two of them are like not doing so hot they were okay and then uh Karen started flirting with all the new guys and Navidson really just wants to go in the hallway and she's like you can't go in the hallway I'm not gonna let you or else I'm gonna leave and so it's like <sighs> Anyway, she doesn't even know that he's already been down the hallway, so I don't know why he's freaking out. I feel like I'm in it now. I think half of the uh, struggle with books like this is that it takes you a while to adjust to the content. And so once you, like, sink into the story and everything, like, it doesn't make sense, but, like, you're in it. I feel like it's easier to push through and, like, it's worth it because you know kind of what you're getting into. It's supposed to get, it's supposed to get weird soon, like, in, like, 20 pages it looks like we start getting some weird, like, mainly I'm talking about, like, stuff like this. I don't know what that, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but it's gonna be interesting, I think. Good morning. Hello. It is, uh, Friday. It's 10 o'clock. Um, I just woke up, like, an hour ago. Since it's Memorial Day, Taylor had rep merch on sale this morning. Anyway, um... 
I got a hoodie because I have no self control. Last night, he had some really long detour about a German person, girl, and they like had sex or something and then she like drove away and he forgot to ask her for a German translation. I love the editor notes because half the time they're like, we don't really know how to explain this. Um, so sorry and then the other half they're like we did the research this is actually what he was trying to say and you're like oh okay johnny we're talking about johnny in the footnotes that's what i meant and they're talking a lot about holloway which is like he's the leader of this expedition thing that's happening with the new guys oh as we are well aware future events will ultimately ultimately reveal how much Holloway feared Navidson would get rid of him and thus deprive him of the recognition he had spent a lifetime trying to obtain, the recognition the house seemed to promise. What future? What are you talking about? Nothing has actually happened, but kind of stuff has happened. Basically, they're getting ready to go on another expedition, but this one is gonna be like, they're expecting it to take like four or five days. But the good news is they're like taking precautions. So they have lights and food and blankets. So they're like smart, but also is it smart to go into this house? I don't know. Who could have predicted that those two words, discover something, would prove the seeds to such unfortunate destruction? The problem, of course, was that the certain something Holloway so adamantly sought to locate never existed per se in that place to begin with. The fuck does that mean? Karen and one of the other guys, the 26 year old kid, um, have a little kissy kiss. Uh, and then the end of this chapter is them being like, a few months later, Navidson saw the kiss on the camera on the tape. Um, by that time, Karen was gone along with everyone else. Nothing mattered. Is she dead? Did she leave him? Ah, that was a lot, but also, um, I'm reading and Oh, 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 look, look, lipstick. You can't see it, a check mark. You don't know what I'm talking about because you haven't read the book. There is a section in the crazy, right before the crazy letter from mom, one of the letters from Johnny's mom, um, when she's starting to go insane in the asylum, she's like, hey, if you got this message and you understand how I'm going to like code the letters for you, um, put a little check in the corner to prove that you got it. Why is there a check mark in this book? What does it mean? Miley Cyrus meme. What does it mean? So like I'm sitting here being like, is this a clue? Is this relevant? Should I keep an eye on this or is this nothing? I don't know. So the team went down. They're gone for seven days and seven nights. It's three o'clock in the morning and they start hearing a knocking. They have no contact with the crew and so they hear this knocking and apparently they start hearing them doing Morse code through the wall and obviously they're saying SOS. And naturally, Navidson is like, this is it, this is my chance, I'm going in there, I'm rescuing them, it's gonna happen. Karen is mad, but also she's like, okay, you're right, I guess, they have to get rescued, I guess. There's all of these dots in the middle of paragraphs. I can't really, I can't really show you well, but I don't know if you can see, there's like dots in here and they're really confusing and I don't, I. First of all, I don't really know Morse code, but I like have it pulled up on my phone because obviously it's relevant, but there's not really anything for a single dot. And so I was like, do I count the dots? Are the dots relevant? They happen in the middle of sentences and they happen in the regular text and also in Johnny's footnotes. So I'm like, ah, what, what does it mean? <sighs> there's like actual Morse code. I don't know if you can see that, but that's basically that's the number seven in Morse code, in case you were wondering. Two dashes and three dots is seven. Basically, they're going down. Navidson and his brother are going to find the people um, because they're saying SOS. But we don't know why. We don't know what's happening.
basically they're down in the house uh, and Johnny is going through it. He's always going through it, but specifically now he's like getting really, really horny. <laughs> Um, but he's also like slowly going insane, question mark? He keeps thinking he sees people and I can't tell if he actually sees them or if they're made up. Who's to say? Um, but the really fun thing that just happened is this interesting footnote. Um, it's this, you can't, blue box. The blue box. And what's interesting about it is, first of all, it like goes on for about 10 pages. And this is like kind of the last little nugget where only this box is relevant the rest of this I haven't read um but they're interesting because uh the pages are like mirror the back is inverted so it looks like kind of like a see-through type of situation it's like the same thing but it looks like you're looking through it kind of so it's mirrored on the back it ends with um just like a blank spot and then the final like see-through of it is it's black I don't know what it means. They're down there exploring, making bad decisions. And that's where we're at. We we did start talking about um, the labyrinth. That's kind of the last little detour we were on. Um, Zampano is talking about um, the labyrinth and how the house is kind of like a labyrinth and ex comparing it to uh, Theseus and the Minotaur, the Grecian, fable story oh oh and then he also makes this comparison that the minotaur in minos's maze that theseus ends up killing isn't actually a minotaur it's a person and it's like his deformed son that he wants to hide from the world um which i guess maybe plays into the repression or something i don't know but if that's the case then if the house is the labyrinth then there's somebody in the house who might be the minotaur question mark or the minotaur is hiding in the basement it's not a basement it feels like a basement but all of the hallways and stuff i guess isn't technically a basement so i'm on page like 120 which means i haven't actually made that much progress today but i feel like i'm at a point now where i've i've passed the tipping point um and i am invested i know it's going to be a lot of work but i'm invested and i'm interested and I want to finish it, so it's fun. It's weird, but it's fun. I'm not scared yet either, so I don't know what that means. I don't know when we're gonna start getting really scared, but it is interesting. I got to a particularly nasty bit of writing, literally all over the place. Like I was showing you guys before, the writing is just like footnotes and backwards and things that should be read with a mirror that I definitely didn't read because I don't care. So we have the expedition people, Holloway, Zet, Wex, not Zed. I think it's Wex. Anyway, we're going to call them Wex. Holloway, Wex, and Jed. So they're down there and they are like really lost and so they are working their way back up to the main part of the house. Um, and in order to get up there, they're going up the stairs and then they find that some of their stuff has been ransacked. Um, and the house, there's a commentary that says the house doesn't let certain things exist inside of it. And so it seemed to suggest that the house is getting rid of stuff, but because there's claw markings, uh, Holloway seems to think there's some kind of creature down there with them. And so naturally, because he's a man with a gun, he's like, I need to go shoot it right now. Um, and so the other two are like, no, this is stupid. Like, we don't have enough supplies. <laughs> also, it's cold. I want to go home. I'm going to go home. So the two of them head off and then Holloway like runs to find this. There's a growl. So he keeps trying to find the growl and uh, the creature or whatever the heck it is. And so they get separated. Eventually, Holloway mistakenly shoots Wex. Jed is like, okay, well, we got to get him home because you shot him. And Holloway's like, no, nah, man, I'm not going to jail. So he like leaves again and Jed has to carry his poor friend. Um, and so eventually they just get lost and lost and Holloway comes back and is shooting things and they just get really, really f confused. And um, at this point, Jed and Wex are in a room somewhere off of the main stairway and there's something coming in the door. Also, uh, Johnny is losing his mind. There's a girl who has been contacting him. He doesn't know how he knows her, and so he goes to find her, 
they of course have sex because what else would he do and she tells him that they met in texas and like all this stuff and at the very end of the meeting he's like yo i've never been to texas what are you talking about and then there's a line from the editors that basically says well it's a somebody sent in an email the girl that he was with or something one of the last comments she makes is i was sorry to hear he disappeared do you know what happened to him there's no reply to that from the editors so apparently johnny disappears at some point which makes sense because he's like literally losing his mind he just like keeps thinking he sees things and he's afraid all the time and he's trying to not be afraid but he's very afraid always also another thing i figured out um some of the footnotes had these weird i can't i you're not gonna be able to see it it's like really tiny but some of these footnotes have like these weird markings that are like letters that i knew weren't letters but i couldn't figure out if they were directing me to something or what and just by happenstance i was looking at this weird ass collage in the back and they have them so basically all of these letters are like markings that explorers use supposedly um and they're like emergency code things so it's like this one is not understood this one's probably safe to land here all well um require medical supplies will attempt to take off so there's like a lot of messages in that and like i only just found that now and i've already missed a couple of the other ones that i've seen but most of the stuff that was complicated in the past like section that i read all the weird things like were footnotes that were unnecessary and long so i don't feel bad about not reading them but i am impressed <laughs> by the formatting and it's literally just like lists of names and films and various things and so it's a lot of work um but now in the story Navidson we're finally back to him and he's going out to explore and find these people who are supposedly dying and we're getting to a point in the book where there's just a lot of negative space on the page which I've heard is for a specific reason uh I don't know it's interesting I'm on page 154 so I feel like I'm like like moving I'm moving doesn't make a lot of sense and it's kind of slow going but like there's just so much oh i totally forgot to bring this up a while ago i was reading um about morse code and there's this part they're talking about morse code and so the guys are off exploring and it's like right before they send out the sos call which i also want to talk about um but like right before that there's this whole like set of footage like this montage in the actual film obviously that we can't see but that is described to us um that Navidson is like he is setting up his shots in a way that it it's like literally a, a visual SOS call which I was like mind blown like he was doing like short clip three short clips and then three like longer space clips and I was like can you like like obviously I can't like physically see this documentary and I would not want to because it sounds like it's terrible but like the concept of using Morse code in a film through shots somebody was making commentary on the house oh I remember and so the guys are lost down in whatever and they're trying they're just trying to get out and so one of them just starts knocking and it doesn't even necessarily have it doesn't even like sound like SOS in Morse code but like the house hears that and like carries it up into the main part of the house so that the other people can find it and like made it sound like an SOS call because they the house knew that they were in trouble and like ah. and on top of that on layers on layers on layers there was also a comment that was talking about um oh it was talking about shock I think and how if you lose a lot of blood like you go into shock and the house is in shock uh when people are in there question mark but if there are no people then the house is dead so people are like the lifeblood of the house which is like haunting of hill house vibes i just i really if i could have my way i would have mike flanagan adapt this for netflix in like a mini series and it would literally be the best thing ever created navidson tom and billy went to go look for the other group and they came to the staircase and apparently based on previous calculations they think the staircase is about 13 miles long and um at this moment, Navidson goes down the stairs and like five minutes later, he's at the bottom. And so they're like, oh, clearly this is the wrong staircase. But apparently it's not because they found trail markers from the other team. 
he goes sleeping. But like, what is going on? What is happening? Also, there's so much blank space on these pages trying to simulate like isolation and darkness and I just, it's a great time. <laughs> Look at this, so much white space. There's just nothing, nothing at all. Darkness. Less than 20 minutes later, what the hell? What is going on? So this person right now is arguing that the house reacts to the mental state of the individual who enters it, question mark. It's all, it's reacting to your brain, question mark. That's what they're insinuating. So like if you're really terrified, I guess it would be make itself scarier. This person is, who going on with that theory is suggesting that uh, the creature that Holloway keeps hearing that he's trying to shoot at was developed by his mind, not the house. Um, the tiny room that Wax finds himself trapped in reflects his own state of exhaustion and despair, and Navidson's rapid descent reflects his own knowledge that the spiral staircase is not bottomless. This is like fucking Hill House. Ooh. Literally the person banging on the door was Navidson. I'm gonna lose my mind, Hugo! Oh. I think, I think you just got shot a and violently killed. Not Davidson, but the guy he's rescuing, maybe? They saw Holloway and then all of the, they, all these doors started closing and now they're alone, but I just, <laughs> the poetic cinema, the poetic cinema. I, I got earbuds. These just came in the mail a couple hours ago. Um, they're from Studio. I don't know if you know Studio. Hello. Um, but they're these really cute. They're like AirPods, except they're Studio brand, and they're wonderful. Um, this is their Femme, white Femme. So, if you know that, that's them. Anyways, I bring this up because I just got these, and so I was testing them out, using them, trying to listen to some music, and I figured I'm already suffering. Why not turn on a horror movie soundtrack? So I turned on It Follows. I don't know if you've seen that movie. I have. It's scary. Um, but the soundtrack is just like very electronic and spooky. And so I, I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll turn it on. I'll see. I'll listen in my ears while I'm reading a horror book. And it so far has lined up very, very well. Um, which is to say I am very terrified. So we were in the middle of Tom. Tom was telling his story because he was recording himself being alone in the house in the dark. Um, and then we got a POV of Johnny who met this like porn star girl who has really big boobs and they found a dog on the side of the road and then the girl was like, I'll take care of the dog. Don't worry. He was like, okay, well, all right. And then she fucking throws the dog out the car. I literally, I was like, you, you, you it's okay, <laughs> cool. Like so far that has been the scariest, most disturbing thing in this whole book and there's been a lot of disturbing shit. But anyways, back to our boys in the pit. It's not a pit, but it feels like a pit. Um, They like found their way back to the staircase. And so Tom dropped down a rope to like bring the people up and the bodies and all that. Like the reason I had to stop because I was freaking out from the horror moves. I was freaking out from the horror music and then I also just like this part. Basically Navy is holding, is helping like, holding the rope trying to get his friend up and literally you can't even like, I can't, I can't really show you. That's what we're working with. Basically it's upside down but it says Davidson is sinking, or the stairway is stretching, expanding. Let's see, where does it go? 
dropping and as it slips dragging Reston up with it then at a certain point the depth of the stairway begins to exceed the length of the depth of the stairway begins to exceed the length of the rope by the time Reston reaches the top the rope has gone taut but the stairway continues to stretch. Realizing what is about to happen, Davidson makes a desperate grab for the only remaining thread connecting him to home, but he is too late. About ten feet above the last banister, the rope <laughs> something us a What the hell? What happened? Oh, it's an N. <laughs> I was reading upside down. <laughs> Snaps. Oh, good. So the rope snapped. These are good headphones, though. They're, like, really, really sweet. I really love them. So if you want to listen to horror music while you're reading your scary book, check out Studio. <laughs> they did send me these, but also, like, they're just, like, I love Studio. I've done stuff with Studio before. They're really awesome. So anyways, this is, like, not sponsored, but kind of sponsored. We stress. So, um, Johnny had another breakdown. I don't even know how to explain his breakdowns. He just like loses track of time and he starts rambling and it's like memories, but you can't, it's not real, but it might be real, but uh, it's so wild. So I don't know what's happening with him. Um, the rope snapped. So now Davidson is like an impossible distance from his peeps. Um, and the tape, the film just ran out and now it's just a white screen. And the next chapter is like loosely titled the minotaur but i will say as terrifying as it is to read with the horror music it like matches up nearly perfect i think i'm almost halfway i don't, I don't know where we're going but it's fun and i am just now eating lunch hanging out on the balcony uh and i figured since I was eaten, I should probably read some of my book. Crazy stuff is happening, so I'm like super stoked to keep going, honestly. She never saw the kids after that. So the beginning of this chapter is what happens in the rest of the house when Navy and everybody is down in the hallways and we come to find out that the kids are like kind of losing it a little bit. They're like drawing all these weird things and Karen is also losing it and she just really is freaking out and when they all get up there, everyone except Navy, uh, it's just like a shit show basically because Jed is dead but they brought his body back and Wex is alive but he has some problems um, and then Tom is upset because Navy didn't make it out and the guy in the wheelchair is also freaking out and then the sheriff comes and the sheriff like walks into the hallway sees what's in there and is like and he literally just like yeeted himself out of that situation uh, and everybody thinks that Navy is basically lost um, nobody knows what's going on with Holloway uh, it's just a fucking shit show basically so apparently the hallway is shrinking now they tried to go back in to find Navy and it just like stops and it keeps getting shorter and there's not any doors anymore and like basically it's not looking good for Navy, but we know he gets out of it because he has to make the video. So what is going on with him? Where is he? What's happening? I know I'm only like halfway through this book, so there's plenty of room for it to get like really fucking terrifying, but like this is not the scariest book ever written. Like sure, it's creepy, but is it terrifying? Uh, mm, not really. I don't think so. I don't think it's really that bad. 
He just walked out of the hallway. He just walked out of the hallway. What? What is happening? He found Holloway stuff. The fuck is happening? Navid, I think what happened is Navid Sin started thinking about all the people who were up in the house and he wanted to get to them and so because his brain wanted that, the house was like, oh, I will start shrinking for you. It won't take you as long because you're thinking about them and you want to be with them. And because he was thinking about Holloway at one point, the house gave him back his stuff. I just have so many questions. But it kind of makes sense, but it doesn't make sense. But it kind of makes sense, but it doesn't make sense. There's an eight there. Why is there an eight there? God damn it. There's a seven. Wait, hold on. I missed these num- I didn't even see the number. What? The fuck are you talking about? There's literally numbers in the margins that I just didn't see. I love being freaking stupid. I'm having so much fun, can you tell? There's a section on Holloway's past and some psychologist who talked to him years ago um, and it's talking all about how he had depression and used to be suicidal um, but now they're insinuating what are these freaking numbers in the margins? Um, anyways, now uh, they're kind of insinuating that oh, oh, oh the house as well as everything inside it becomes the extent of you it's an extension of you so it's like an immense isolation tank um the individual begins to create his own sensory redacted <laughs> um depending on the duration of his stay begins to project more and more of redacted personality on those bare walls and vacant hallways so the house takes on uh, the features, traits, personality of the person in it, all the people in it, one person, I don't know. Um, obviously earlier they talked about how the house is like very psychological. Um, so much to think about. Uh, we're getting ready to go to the Holloway tape that Navidson recovered. So. We vibin'. It's creepy, but it's not scary. It's just suicide. At the end of this tape, Holloway kills himself, which I think I knew. Because there's the scene earlier, Chad was talking, Chad is what, the kid. Um, he freaks out because he thinks he hears voices and like noises and maybe a gunshot question mark. And I thought something was happening, but I didn't know who or what. So now we know it was Holloway. Um, and then there's this section at the end of the tape where there's like nothing and there's silence and then, uh, let's see. Fingers of blackness slash across the lighted wall and consume Holloway. And even if Redacted loses sight of everything, the tape still records that terrible growl. Um, this time without a doubt inside the room. So there may or may not be a preacher. I think it's part of the house. I think it's just the house getting rid of things, you know, cleansing itself. It's, uh, mm, here's the thing. I could write an essay about this. If I was in college, I would write an essay about this book and compare House of Leaves to The Haunting of Hill House because I think ultimately uh, the house wants you. It wants to take you and eat you <laughs> and like keep you for itself maybe, question mark? Because I think that's what it's doing. It's like taking back what it's owed i don't know we're getting philosophical it's fine also there was a comment where johnny thinks that um Zampano is trying to get rid of all the commentary about the minotaur so i still don't know what it means a lot of part of it is insinuating that this darkness thing creature whatever could be considered the minotaur even though it's not literally a minotaur 
And Johnny's still going insane, so that's fun. The next section is titled Escape. They still have those freaking weird numbers in the margin, and I don't know what they mean. Confusion. There is a knock on the door, but the door is locked and nobody is supposed to be in the hallway. All the lights upstairs go out one by one. Oh no. Karen screams. The bedroom begins to collapse. Holloway's actions alter the physics of that space. The darkness almost immediately crushes Karen, she collapses. What is happening? The floor drops literally. This is so good. I'm like listening to It Follows while this is happening. And um. I think it must be because they're trying to leave. Um, Karen is like packing things up and all of a sudden the house is just like having a, a huge tantrum basically. It's like it compressed their bedroom and then she like went to go hide in this closet space and it got bigger and the Navy went and found her and got her out except the door frame kind of like collapsed too and like hit her in the head. And she like kind of had a seizure earlier um, but Navy gets her out and then he's going in, he re-enters the house to try and get the kids and as he's sprinting down the hallway, the floor collapses and he's like sliding into the living room um, he grabs a handle on one of the doors. Should be crazy! The floor is dropping. Tom and Daisy are trying to get out. And in doing so, the house is just like not having it. So it's just going crazy, doing a lot of weird shit. Um, eventually Tom gets Daisy out to Navidson and Navidson is trying to help Tom but Tom like can't move because the house keeps doing stuff and then it like breaks all his fingers and then there's bones shutting out of his body and then the floor disappears and he just like falls and obviously dies and then you can like hear his gasp and I let me tell you the writing I have wanted an experience like this for a long time. I never have these experiences and every time I get one I have to like hold on to it because it's just so, like obviously it's terrible, people are dying and it's awful, but like the writing, the genius, the twists, like it's just serotonin, literally serotonin. The house is really mad. I love it when houses are personified. I just finished a section all about Karen. So after the whole fiasco happens, she and the kids move to New York City. Davidson keeps saying he's gonna join them and he doesn't because I think he's in the house. And so Karen uh, starts doing some edits and she gets some uh, reactions from various people uh, like Stephen King and Anne Rice because obviously. Um, and she's like trying to figure out what's the meaning of the film like what does it mean what does the house mean what is the meaning and everybody's like i don't know whatever you want it to be i don't know i don't know i don't know what does it mean to you and so karen makes a film uh made up of like navidson's own personal photographs um and she it's like basically it's what she loves which is like her family and the people in it and so eventually at this point uh she is she realizes that she like just really wants to be with Davidson and so I think she's like getting ready to reconcile and potentially go back to the house because she makes a comment that her mom says she should sell the house and I don't think she's going to and the last lines of this section are of course she had no idea what that would entail or how far she would have to go dun 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 look at the little floof he's just chilling I'm scared.
I've been listening to the Midsummer score. I've never seen Midsummer because it's terrifying, but like the score, it slaps. It's a good time. Uh, Karen went back to the house and she moved in and everything was fine and basically all of the scary stuff was not there. So she was like, it's fine. I'll just live here, see where Navy is. And then she like starts doing stuff and she thinks she hears his voice which I think is plausible. And everybody kind of thinks she's going crazy and she's like, no, I can hear him, he's here, whatever. And then one night she walks in and like all of his supplies and like tapes and stuff are there. And so she goes down, <laughs> she goes downstairs to watch the tape or somewhere, I don't remember where she is. She's going to watch the tape. So she puts in the tape and literally the wall behind her disappears into a black inky blob and she doesn't realize it because she's watching the tape and then the way that the chapter ends is that the she realizes because of what's on the tape but we don't know what's on the tape because it stops and then there's no period at the end of the whole thing and then and then we cut to navy going in again also johnny johnny is going through it he has decided first of all he's gotten a lot of guns and he had a very weird dream and he is going now east. He's going to find Ash Tree Lane. Why? I don't know. How? I don't know. It's fine. But he had a dream that he was the Minotaur. 90% sure that that's what it was. And like somebody was trying to uh, kill him with an axe and then they succeeded question mark. But the whole concept is that like he is the Minotaur, but I still don't know what it means. But I think that's what the dream was implying, question mark. But where I'm at right now, the part that is really freaking strange, <sighs> Navy is going, he, he had, he prepared for this massive journey because he wanted to like go back into the house for whatever reason. Um, and there was like a lot of commentary about why he went back into the house. Uh, what was the reasoning for it? He just wanted to take more pictures, which is like, stupid but also valid because we've all been there <laughs> um there was like a whole section on photojournalism and why people photog photograph why people photograph things he like gets all of this equipment and he gets like a bike and all kinds of stuff and he's like okay i got rations for two weeks let's go and the house is just so weird i just it's like if hill house met monster house met something else creepy that's also a labyrinth i don't know um but he like goes in and he starts first of all anywhere he bikes is like downhill so i feel like the house is trying to help him and be like oh you want to explore we'll help you we will send you far you don't have to work so hard you'll just be in the house forever um and so he's biking a lot like hundreds of miles a day and he doesn't know how and then the odometer is that what it's called the thing that tracks the mileage broke and he's like whatever it's fine nothing matters anyway i don't know what day it is eventually the um video recorder the tapes lose like won't show a date because it's irrelevant apparently he has no idea how long he's been down there he keeps running into all these different obstacles um at one point he almost like falls into this massive pit and he stops just in time but like that almost happens and then he finds like a little house within the house and there's this staircase that is going sideways but when he wakes up in the morning it's upward so he has to travel up the staircase and you have to turn the book to read it and like read upside down upside down left to right which is like a mind game and it's just so interesting like it's not scary i mean it's i'm scared for karen i am i don't know what she's gonna deal with um, and I still feel like there's something coming, but like none of this is particularly terrifying. It's more just like, like the concept of being in an enclosed dark space that's endless that you may or may not ever get out of. And like, it's all based on your mind. Kind of hate that concept. Uh, personally, would not like to be there. Um, but I think like the writing is exquisite because it's academic, but there's no, like, all of the sources are fake none of it is a real thing and so the writer just like completely like there's the author who wrote the book in our world physically and then there's the author of the book in the world who is writing about fictional stuff so it's like you had to create like 
the layers of the book there's just so many and there's so many footnotes and I don't even have time or energy to read all of them but somebody wrote them and created fake publications and like like is this my favorite book of all time no I have a lot of issues with it and I don't think it's the best book ever because it's not it's not however reading experience wise a plus 10 out of 10 I'm loving it um, I think the work that went into it like should definitely be taken into account because it's a lot of work and it makes no sense but also it does make sense. What I'm most excited about aside from figuring out what's going on is getting to go on like the web and like research and see what other people are saying about it which makes it very communal and like I understand why people get so obsessed with it and like the fuck of it all is that's what the whole book is about. Not really but kind of because like it's this fictional thing but everybody who like watches this film most of them get like really intense about it like there was one person who commented on it who was like ah I just get really into it this is why I've seen it 38 times or something and like this isn't even actual film this is obviously like an academic commentary on the film but basically you get to watch the film while you're reading it and it's like obviously Johnny gets really obsessed and deep with it and Davidson gets obsessed with the house and it's like it's just fun like it's a good good ass reading experience because like I like books that make me feel things I like books that make me cry because they're beautifully written and whatever um and there, it's not that there's not there's some good quotes in this book honestly there have been a multiple moments where I've been like interesting and I like that it makes a lot of commentary on the human spirit and like how your psyche shifts your perception of things because a lot of what's going on is that people perceive the house differently based on their brain and how they're how they're living their life how they have experienced life leading up to that moment whatever and I the commentary that you could like I could probably write a paper about this book honestly um if I was in college and I had the option to write a book write a paper um, I would probably compare this to The Haunting of Hill House and write a comparative essay because it would be so freaking sick. I just really like books like this because they're so... they push the limits of art. Like most of my favorite things and the things that have pushed me as an artist and as a person are works of art that like test the limits of their medium. I feel like I'm writing an essay. Um, like even musicals talking about Natasha Pierre and the Great Con of 1812 the reason I like that musical even though the content I think is great and it does talk a lot about things that I care about and the music is awesome and like whatever it pushes the limits of theater because the production like the physical production when you see it like it just cannot be explained because it's not like regular theater you as an audience member are participating in it you feel like you're a part of it you have I don't know there's something about it that is just different than everything on the stage and that is how I feel about this book there are other books that I feel like this about where it's like it's not just a novel like the the book says it's a novel on the cover and I was like that's not really true this is an experience um like it just baffles it baffles me that like we have the same 26 letters in the alphabet for the English language and and like people can write like a steamy contemporary romance that's like 200 pages that's like oh my god that was cute to like this is basically like an extremely intense academic paper that also functions as a film that also like has a commentary on like photography and it has commentary on family and psychology and like all of this other stuff and it's the same 26 letters that I use to write my book and yet all of those books exist in the same universe feel like a galaxy brain moment right now where I'm like oh my god the world it exists we're here we're doing things you know you can't even see it's 1 40 in the morning and I finished I don't know how I feel about it I don't think it well what? Mm -hmm. kombucha girl um I think I was hoping for a different ending but I can appreciate where it did go instead and I think I will be looking up a lot of information about it in the next few days. Navidson was exploring, Karen saw a big black wall and Johnny was going insane. Navy goes for a very long time, an indefinite amount of time, we have no idea how long he's down in the house um, and eventually he gets so cold and he runs out of everything and he's just floating and then at the very last minute he sees a light and his film ends and K 
Karen turns around and she just decides that she's gonna walk into the darkness because I think she hears a voice or something. And so she goes in there and she walks for a little bit and then she just kind of, she's walking and then she just kind of starts thinking about Navy and eventually she finds him and she holds him and she just like loves on him for like a minute and then they wake up in the front of their yard and it's a happily ever after ending. No one else dies. They get out of the house. Uh, Navy ends up losing like an, a hand in like his eye or something, some various other things from hypothermia, but they make it out. They're safe. They get married. And then uh, Johnny poor baby boy Johnny he I don't really know what actually happened to him he just kind of goes crazy for like a year he writes down a bunch of things that happen and then he's like just kidding they didn't happen <laughs> I'm just testing you or did they happen we don't know um and eventually he ends up in Arizona and he's at a bar and this band is playing a song about the five and a half minute hallway and so he finds like all of like everybody Somehow, I guess, he must have published the book while he was out gallivanting, not remembering things. And because he figured out that other people were, like, getting things out of this story and, like, I don't even know what other people were getting out of it, but other people got things out of the story. And because of that, he kind of turned it around a little bit, I think. And he, he maybe felt... I can't remember all the details are blurring together I'm pretty sure he felt better and he was like realizing things about himself and then the last thing we have from his perspective is he there's this story that he remembers whatever that means um, of this mom who has a preemie baby and the baby like in the end the baby dies and she like lets it go and so it's like is he the baby who is the baby I really don't know. So we don't really know what happens. Yeah, that's basically where it ends. I like the happy ending. Everybody says this is the scariest book of all time and it's like a horror book and it's scary and that my friends is bullshit. <laughs> like sure, it's there are some scenes that are kind of stressful and it is like objectively like it's a scary house. I would not want to go in the house if if I was given the choice, I would not go in the house. It's not... <laughs> it's not scary. Like, there were... N the closest I got was maybe when they were stuck down in... Oh, the scene where the rope snaps and Davidson got stuck down there. That was scary. Um, and also Johnny going insane. Those were the moments where I was like, oh, like when the dog got thrown out the window, I was like, ah. But, like, it wasn't... Like, I was listening to horror music the whole time like the It Follows soundtrack the whole time and it's scary but like it there was never a moment that I didn't trust the book you just get this suspense in the beginning and like the way it's written there's so much allusion to like what's coming and and you get I think it's more about it's a galaxy brain <laughs> it's about your psyche and how you view the book going into it because I think even though I was I wanted it to be like a scary murder book there was also a part of me that was like come on it really can't be that bad like there there there's got to be something else there's got to be a catch here like there's got to be something good you know so anyways I think that's like part of it is if you see the end and you just think it's going to be really bad like if that's where your head goes then you're not going to be able to get through it and you're not going to be able to overcome that but it's like but like the whole point of the book is it's not scare like sure the house is evil and we hate the house no nobody goes near the house but like objectively the house has oh it's like the hunting of hill house like the house does things to help you like almost all the times that people ask for help or people need something like the house gives it to them in some weird way and so like it's not a horror so every, I just, I don't, like, I get it, but I don't understand why everybody spent the whole time before being like, it's such a scary book, it's scary, it's scary, it's horror. It's about love, it's about, it's about your perspective. I think that's what's so interesting, is like, you can kind of twist it any way you want it at the end, but, like, the whole book and the house, the point of the house is like, it's about how you perceive things and how 
you go into certain situations and what you bring to the table. It's about your history, but it's about how you were raised and how you see the world. And so even if it's about all these other things, like the point of the house is like you control your own fate, which is literally the whole point of my exi like my 20s is that whole this book is my 20s oh no it's late and I'm brainstorming it's just, I just like my brain is just like whirring through everything trying to figure out what's going on oh we didn't even talk about Davidson reads House of Leaves when he's in the house don't know what that means but anyways thank you for watching my very weird very rushed reading vlog um, this was an experience. I hope I gave you some insight if you decided not to read it and you just watched this video. I don't know. Let me know your theories if you've actually read it, uh, because I would love to talk about it forever and ever and ever and ever. Definitely a new favorite. Definitely not gonna be able to sleep for the next two weeks. Bye!